As a part of the new Figma updates, there's a new wrap feature in Auto Layout. This is huge because it's something designers have wanted for quite some time. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to utilize it in Figma. And then I'm also going to show you how to implement it on the front end within Visual Studio Code in the new Figma Visual Studio Code plugin. So let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. Alrighty, let's get started here. So I'm in Figma and we're gonna get a frame here and we're gonna choose desktop uh, just to get started with this. And what we're gonna do is just create uh, four different cards. So I'm gonna hit R for a rectangle and these are gonna be pretty small cards here because we want four of them side by side. So uh, this will give us, yeah, that'll, that'll work right there, that size. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna make the background white here or just remove it. And we're gonna add an effect of the drop shadow. Um, we're gonna make the blur, I'm gonna zoom up here so you can see it, around 40. And then we'll offset the X and the Y a bit. And let's see what that looks like. Oh, yeah, that's right, we can't see it because we don't have a fill. All right, <laughs> I completely forgot about that one little tidbit. Now we're gonna drag the corners in just a bit. We'll come back here to our settings and I'm gonna take the opacity of the uh, fill down a bit. We're, let's actually, let's make a colorized version. Get a little bit of color in there. We can increase the opacity just a bit. Right around there is good, I like it. And then we'll just put some text inside. So I'm gonna hit T, left click and drag out and uh, I'm just gonna say something random, like a random quote. Maybe this is just random quote cards or something. So, um, to live is to die and to not design is to not live. <laughs> I just literally came up with that now. So we're gonna take our enter, we'll leave that there. Enter's fine, we'll do like a size 20 um, and get a little bit more line height. And yeah, that's looking pretty good right there. So this is what it looks like with four of them kind of just next to each other. Yep, pretty decent, nothing nothing ground groundbreaking in terms of design. So what I'm gonna do is take both of these elements, select both of them, and we're gonna choose auto layout. All right, so now this will make the height of this element hug that. Um, and then what we'll do, I, if I get in here and I specifically select control, left click, we'll select something that's in a frame or nested in a group or whatever. So we have just this type later selected. Uh, we wanna make sure this is um, changed to fill container. All right, so if I leave that fixed content and we change this, it's gonna stay that size. So we wanna make sure that this is fill container. All right, so that when we expand it, it gets adjusted like that. Now, to, let's go ahead and bring in our other four. So I'm gonna duplicate that, Control D, then duplicate and duplicate that one. And then finally, we'll take all of these and we cho uh, choose to add an auto layout. All right, so for our auto layout, we have this new option right here, and that is right here, that's to wrap them. All right, nothing really changes right off the bat, uh, but if I start to drag this in, you will see that they are now responding, which is awesome. Um, what if we wanted those to actually fill uh, the available space? Uh, for instance, if I bring this in, well, let's go ahead first and we're gonna take all four of these by selecting these. And we are gonna choose, instead of fixed up here, we're gonna do fill container. All right, so now when we drag this in, they're gonna work. Now, obviously for the purpose of design, this is bad. Nobody's gonna bother trying to read a sentence where there's just like two words per line. So you, as a designer, you have to ask yourself, at what point does it make sense to collapse this into like two rows uh, instead of just one row? So for us, let's say maybe it's right there. Um, and so what we do is we can, once we have that defined, we can double click into one of these and we can see the width right up here is 211. Okay. So with that said, we can select all four of these and then now we can also give a minimum width of 211. Okay, so at that point, well, if we go back here and we select this, we'll see that unfortunately, I think the changes that we made, I it, it took the wrap off. Add that back, now this is gonna work as intended. Look at that. So now it behaves just like a CSS grid or something like that. 
and that's great. So one last thing that we'll do here in Figma is, uh, let's get this centered up. So now let's select the frame and we're gonna choose Auto Layout. And in doing that, um, we wanna take this element here and we're gonna change this from Fix to Fill Container. And now we can just simply take the frame and achieve the same result, kind of like how you would in a browser window. Okay, so now let's go ahead and switch gears and let's focus um, on the actual Visual Studio Code part. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Open Folder. I'm gonna go by Code. I'm gonna say Figma Wrap, we'll just call this. Select the folder. And I'm gonna create just a, an index.html. Exclamation point, enter for an Emmet abbreviation for a quick boilerplate. We'll do link main dot, or let's see here. We'll do CSS main dot CSS. Make sure you can see this. Let's get our CSS folder with a main dot CSS file. Awesome. Now, a couple more things uh, before we begin. I want to go ahead and uh, use the Figma plugin. So go to your extensions if you don't have it and just type in Figma for VS Code and install it. And then it'll ask you to log in and all that st good stuff. And then you'll see this new area right here. And this will let us uh, choose the most recent files. All right, so there's our design right there. Awesome, awesome stuff. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is for, we're gonna create the HTML markup. We need that before the CSS, obviously. So I'm gonna wrap everything in a class called container. And then also I'm going to put in a section element. And then we're gonna have a card. Um, and I will simply paste, copy and paste the type. All right. And then shift alt down on that line. And there we go, we have our markup. That's exactly what we want. Um, so if I go back here to our files, right click, open with live server, we'll see the cards. Let me go ahead and move this all over here, right there. Nothing exciting yet. Okay, that's because we don't have CSS. So let's go ahead to CSS now at this point, and um, I, let's just do body here. And for a body element, we're not gonna have anything too exciting, just a height of 100 before height, margin zero. All right. Then we're gonna have a container. So the container just wraps around it, everything. We're just gonna give it like padding of like three M units. All right. So. Now we have our actual section, which is right here. All right, so for our section, I thought about initially using a grid, like CSS grid uh, with the min max feature um, for an auto fit to create, you know, without any media queries, uh, a responsive, you know, representation of what's happening here. But you can actually do this with, uh, with, with Flexbox as well, which is, you know, pretty cool the way that works. So the way we can do this is uh, we're gonna say display flex. All right, we're gonna give it a gap of just one M unit or like 16 pixels and flex wrap is going to be wrap. All right, so that's all we really need on the actual parent container. And if we bring out um, the results so far, this is what we get. Of course, we want this blurred aesthetic and all that stuff so we can click over here and you can see for stylization, we have this code, which we can go ahead and paste in, and that's gonna be our card. So this is just uh, you know stylization stuff. We save it, we should see it's roughly kind of correct, but not really. Okay, so then we have our main um, content right here, display fl flex, a min width, we have a bunch of padding, all that good stuff. Uh, so what I'll do is just take this and we'll likely be able to simplify it. I'm just gonna paste that all right there. And we're gonna see what happens to see what the code output actually does um, for us out of the gate. Okay, so this is, I'm really zoomed up. Let's uh, zoom out. Okay, it's actually, surprisingly, I uh, responding exactly kind of how I uh, how it's working currently in the actual Figma prototype, which is pretty nuts. Um, it's not giving us the right font, and that's because we haven't selected the actual font itself. 
So if we take font size, font family, line height, all that stuff, we add that as well and save it. We got a little bit closer, but enter isn't being picked up. Let's wrap that in semicolons, and this will be uh, sans serif. Of course, I'm not importing the font yet, um, just, just for demonstration purposes, but <laughs> there we go. That is <clears throat> a really quick and easy uh, way to get it inside of your actual browser and, and get it fully realized. Um, we can actually simplify this code right here quite a bit. Um, and so one of the first things that I notice here is it's uh, we're putting a minimum width of 3.1875 rem units. Um, we could actually take that value right here and put it here in this flex shorthand property. So if we do that and save it, you're gonna see it's working still exactly as intended, which is awesome. Okay. Um, additionally, I'm trying to look at anything else that we could probably change. The font size stuff we could probably put inside of its own paragraph selector. All right. So we save that. And it's, I'm doing something. Oh, that's because, sorry about that. I'm not working in SAS. There we go. So let's go ahead and I'm so used to working in SAS that that is typically what happens. Um, our paragraph, let's see, did we actually put those in paragraphs? No, we didn't. That's not, That's why it's not working. So let me just put these in paragraphs. That completely escaped my mind. Uh, let's do this. There we go. So now I'll delete these. Put this here. There we go. So now let's copy this. Paste, paste save and there we go that's a better uh, representation now i noticed that there's a little bit of a height up here so typically when that happens let's go to f12 we'll inspect this all right so this is because the paragraph has some uh, white space being added added through margin um, so what we'll do is margin zero save it come back and there we go. Awesome, so that right there is pretty solid. Uh, align items, that, again, that's one of those things that we certainly don't need. Uh, and again, it'll still work just the same. So padding, again, it's still gonna work after removing align items, flex start. So there's a lot of stuff that's, you know, you don't necessarily need that comes from this code section. Um, but overall, it actually did a pretty good job. Um, I wish it would translate like stylization properties from pixels to rem, M or rem units, but it's not doing that. Um, either way, no big deal. I just thought I'd share this with you about how you can quickly take uh, your design, obviously, uh, in this case, it's in the context of the new wrap feature and get it integrated and ready to rock on the front end. All right, everybody, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you all very soon. Goodbye.